Win big with new DRF All Access Pass Performances. With one best in class product, you now get all three pass performance formats. Go to drf.com and use coupon code one free PP for a free single card today. Hi, everybody. Dan Oman, Ashley Mayu, taking a look at race number three at Santa Anita on Saturday. It's the grade one Oakley for two year old fillies prepping for the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Fillies at Del Mar later this fall. We're going a mile and a 16th. Before we take a look at the entry card, remember, nice deal for DRF TV viewers, 10% off all DRF past performances. Use the coupon code DRFTV10. Shop now by accessing the QR code on the screen. Here is the field for the grade two Oak Leaf. We have eight two-year-old fillies, three of them trained by Bob Baffert, two already graded stakes winners, including Tenma stretching out off the Del Mar debutante. Yeah, this is an interesting field top to bottom, Dan. I mean, obviously you mentioned Baffert with several in here, makes up about half the field. And a couple other horses, though, I think could be improving types. You have a couple of maidens. So you sort of get what you expect in a race like this out at Santa Anita. One of those maidens is expected to make the lead, according to our Timeform U.S. pace projector. That's the number one, Rio del Sol. Although I do wonder if the four Nuni just might be a little bit faster, stretching out and showing sprint speed in her prior starts. Yeah, I mean, Nuni wanted to go even last time out at the 7 eighths distance, and those fractions weren't soft by any means, especially the opening quarter and the half. So I don't know if Rio del Sol will necessarily make an easy lead. Um, she's coming out of that mile event where they did go fast, but not as fast as a couple of others in here. If the pace is hot, keep an eye on the two. Jack's Magic Girl, she is a true one-run closer, has the fastest time form U.S. late pace rating. Let's kick things off with Rio Del Sol, who was beaten by Showers in her career debut. Going a two-turn mile, Showers had the experience edge. It's never easy to debut, and this horse was close to a pretty fast pace. Michael McCarthy, a really good trainer, showing confidence, throwing this maiden right into the grade one. Yeah, you don't necessarily see these movies a uh, move, excuse me, from Michael. I think the big thing with this horse is debuted at a mile. That can be tough on a horse, Dan. So to see this one now have that second career start around two turns, I think there is room for improvement. But even with that said, the improvement is going to have to be pretty great against several others in here that are already in those 70, 80 buyer speed figure range. She only got a 47 for her debut, but you can see she's been working regularly since that. She's had some really nice uh, workouts out at Santa Anita. But she'd be a big price in here if she wins. Jack's Magic Girl did successfully win her debut going a mile, but that race was on turf. They tried the Del Mar debutante last time, and she probably lost all chance when she stumbled really badly at the start and was just outrun in the early portion of that fast-paced race. I did like that she was making up a little bit of ground at the end, and there's a chance this pace could get hot. I think she'll last the two turns. Absolutely. I think she'll love going a mile in the 16th, and even though she stumbled, at least she was able to do something in the final stages where she was making up ground. And you can say, sure, Tenma had to close from off of it, but look at the difference in terms of how many lengths they were off the pace early. Uh, Jack's Magic Girl had a, a lot going against her in those early stages. And her debut, I thought, was very good. Um, the way that she did, I thought it was very professional. She was much the best in that group. And I know it was on turf, but at least we've seen what she can do uh, and can kind of graduate on debut. And uh, given the poor circumstances last time out, she ran okay. The first of the Baffert trio is the three Tenmos displayed a lot of grit in both lifetime starts. And I think you can make the argument after watching her run, she might actually relish more distance. Let's watch her win in the Del Mar debutante. She's trying to rally from off the pace in here, and she's going to grind down this leader. It takes her the length of the stretch, but she does get it done. Baffert's going to put blinkers on off this win, and that's a move he's done successfully with young horses in the past. Absolutely. And maybe it's to have her a little bit fo more focused early on. But I think another part of her success so far, you mentioned these are gritty wins where she's really had to work for it, is Kazushi Kimura. Uh, he is an aggressive rider. He can get, get a lot of, out of his horses in the stretch. And I think that has been key to her success to this point. He sticks with her here. Um, very well-timed rides in both of them, but really had to get on her in those final stages. So to me, a mile and a 16th is probably better for her. She may have to work a little less hard. Nuni shook loose on an impressive debut score at Santa Anita, then went to Del Mar and won the Sorrento, beating a quality filly in vodka with a twist in gate-to-wire fashion. Maybe she just went too fast on the lead last time out in the Del Mar debutante. 21 and change, 44 and change. She tired very badly. We'll see how far she wants to go, but she'll be forwardly placed. It's tough to know what to do with her last effort. Obviously, she took a lot of money in there. The betting public's choice when it was all said and done, and 
She only beat two horses in there. She was well defeated. The top two, though, were clear of the rest of the field. Um, one of my concerns is I don't like to play the, the jock game too much, Dan, but Juan Hernandez gets off of this one, takes non-compliant on the outside. To me, um, maybe that just has to do with what he's seen so far. We could see Nooney maybe be a little bit better around one turn. I guess we'll find out here as she stretches around two turns, but I was disappointed in her last effort. She just had no late punch. In the air tonight, the number five is a quality California bred, trying open foes for the first time. She won her first two starts, including an open length swing against Cal bred horses at Del Mar going five and a half. They ran her in the generous portion last time out, and she ran okay. She was merely second best, I thought, after an inside out trip. She does seem solid, however, and I think tactical enough stretching out in distance where she can work out a good trip in behind the speeds. You know, I thought this effort was decent. Um, kind of looking at how she's closing, she is making up ground in the final stages. She's simply second best, though, behind Hot Girl Walk. And um, looking at her, it was her second start off that little bit of a freshening. But really, Dan, she's done nothing wrong. She would need to take a step forward in terms of her figures. But I love that she's been working out very well. She seems like she's always been a little bit of a, you know, good workhorse in the morning in terms of her times. But I think she's really stepped it up in those last couple of drills. And just looking at her running style, if there's pace to run at, I think the pace is going to be hotter than some of the races she's seen so far to this point in her career. At least she can show that she can pass horses and she is rolling late. I said Baffert had three. Who am I kidding? It's Southern California. It's two-year-old racing. He's got four, including the six showers, who was a really nice winner. And perhaps most impressively, she's done it around two turns already at Del Mar in her second lifetime start. Showed really good tactical speed in that race and blew him away in the stretch. I realize her buyers pale in comparison to those of the other main contenders in this race, but I think this filly has loads of upside. Yeah, that's why I said it nicely. Half the field or about half the field that Bob has here. Um, you know, he's got a lot of different horses in here and different takeaways from their last out. She was obviously very impressive winning and drawing clear. And I guess you talked about the buyers being like at least last time out was at a mile. Now it was at Del Mar, Santa Anita going to be a little different for her. But I, I like that she has a win um, going longer than a lot in here um, that we've seen so far. If they've had wins, they've had it on the turf, right? We talked about one of those runners. So has a little bit of an edge there. I'm just not sure in some of those what she's necessarily faced. I mean, we look at her win last time out. She was much the best. She only had four other rivals, one of which draws the inside in this spot and is still a maiden with that one start under her belt. The seven is Amon Joy, a Cal bred, stretching out for the first time off two okay sprint races. She failed to win either time, but at least she was running on at the end of both of those starts. This is a big class hike, however. The runner-up from her last race did come back to win, but did so in a Cal bred maiden special with only a 60 buyer. She is kind of a, a tough sell for me. I guess the question, too, is not even just the caliber, but... She's been flying late in those sprints. Is she going to get the setup that she needs here to do the same? Will she be closer to the pace early? There's just too many unknown factors with her just looking at her sprint races, Dan, that I can't really figure out the trip that she's going to get. And another one that we've talked about, she's probably going to need to take a huge step forward. So um, I think there are other bigger prices in here that I found a little bit more intriguing. While well, Tenman and Nooney are already graded stakes winners, non-compliance run the fastest race of any. That's the debut try that we're going to take a look at right now, going three quarters of a mile back in late August. And non-compliant ran pretty well in this race, working out an inside-out trip, forges to the front in the stretch, and keeps about her business. 82 buyer speed figure is nothing to sneeze at, and she is another one that seems very tactical, and I think this distance will prove no issue. Yeah, 110 here for six furlongs, pretty good on the debut, and Thought she did what she needed to do to win. Got a good trip, too, where she wasn't on the lead throughout, right? She was towards the back, and the field wasn't really strung out in the early stages. But she could pass horses. She got on the outside. Um, I mentioned it earlier. Juan Hernandez, I don't want to say that he had the choice. I don't know. It just feels like he might have had the choice, and this is what he chose based on that debut. So I have to think there's some upside now. Second time, she's going to stretch around two turns. I think looking at how she won her debut, I'm not concerned about the distance. Let's take a look at our top picks for the Oak Leaf, a potential prep for the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. You're going with Tenma. She's done nothing wrong. She really acts like two turns isn't going to be an issue. She's bred for it. And again, I like this blinkers on move. Bob likes to tinker with these uh, equipment changes with lightly raced two-year-olds, and he's had a lot of success. Yeah, you know, it was tough in here. I like non-compliant as well. I just think Tenma has a little bit more foundation. You talked about the equipment change, and I said it earlier. I think Kazushi Kimura really gets along with this filly very nicely. And from a pedigree perspective and what we've seen so far, I have faith in her going around two turns. But I see you're going to get a price in here. And 
I like in the air tonight a little bit. I think this horse has some upside, and we certainly know what you're going to get is value. Yeah, I'm going to try to fish for a little bit of a price. I like her tactical speed. You noted that she was really trying hard at the end of her most recent start, going three quarters of a mile. She's bred for the distance, and she's been working quickly since her last start. Maybe she can fall into a pretty good trip, but she's going to have to improve to beat the likes of Tenma or even Nooney if she runs back to her big race and certainly non-compliance debut buyer. Three, eight, five, four for Ashley. I'll concentrate five, eight with the three and the two underneath. In race number three, the Oak Leaf on a big Saturday afternoon of racing at the Great Race Place. Good luck. Hey, buddy, you look like you're in need of a winner. And just remember, if you like and subscribe right over here, you can get all of the great content on DRF.com, including Race of the Day, Stakes Previews, and lots more featuring me and my superb selections. I trust me, you're not going to regret it.